What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? What is going on, everybody? This is your man, Dre Mac. Up to you again with another episode of the Dre Mac Show. 7.30 in the morning, Central Time, 8.30 out on the East Coast. Hopefully, you guys are having an excellent start to your morning. Today, 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 I'm going to go over the breakdown of episode six of x-men and it answered a lot of questions uh that i actually had about the episode uh especially you know the conversation that we had like you know the expectation and everything uh it answered a lot of my question i got i got a, a, a few things right you know not everything but i got a few things right so uh I, we're going to discuss it today um and that was the biggest thing I wanted to uh, to discuss the actual uh, show a day later instead of the same day. So people can have time to watch it, you know, and then we can actually have time to discuss and all of that and, and you know, have a good time discussing that where everybody can be able. I hate to say it like this, but where everybody can be able to participate. You know, because sometimes I'm like, well, I haven't watched it. I don't know what's going on. I'm just really just going off what you guys said. I want people to uh to watch this show. I think this is some of the best stuff Marvel has put out. And just like this episode, there is certain things that this episode did that, I mean, easily could translate to live action. Live action. uh, Easily translate to live action. So... You know, I think this is going to be, this has been amazing, all of that. And, of course, like I said, I want to share this with you you guys. But hope you guys are happy. Hope you guys are healthy. Shout out to my man, Heavy Gant, over at the Heavy Gant channel. But you already know how I do. You know how I get down. The real question is... All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, so uh, let's see what was all up in the house. Uh, Frankenstein is in here. What's going on? Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Princess is in the house. Good morning to you. Tracy Woods is up in here. What is up? Uh, since I'm here, one, top of the morning to ya. Good morning, Roberta is up in here good morning good morning good morning Fahim carter is up here good morning good morning my brother juanita is in here good morning good morning michael johnson is up in here good morning good morning good morning now you know uh let me just give you a, a couple of tidbits of what's, what's getting ready to go on uh here uh today i do have a video uh since i'm going straight to the x-men breakdown Straight to the X-Men breakdown. There is a video that I'm going to do on um, Comedy Hype's uh, latest video about Jonathan Majors. Would he ever return or would he ever have his career back in Hollywood or whatever the, the name of it was? I wasn't really paying that much attention to it, but I know it's there. And, um, and of course, I want to just see what they're talking about. It's going to be a reaction video. You know, uh, so, you know, I'm just letting you guys know that I will uh, be recording that. Let me drop this mic down. So uh, I am going to be recording that. That's going to be coming uh, today. I, a lot of the videos, especially when I take snippets and stuff like that, are going to come around three o'clock in the uh, three o'clock uh, central time, which is my time, which will be four o'clock on the East Coast time. Uh, on the West Coast time, I think that's uh, one o'clock. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, like I said, uh, got a couple things in the uh, worst. Good morning, Erica Dixon. Good morning. Good morning. You know, so I got that coming. You know what I mean? Um, I was going to save it for Friday show, but I want to just kind of get that video out because I'm, I, I want to start doing, uh, if it's not simplest, it's just at least a video. 
that I could be able to get out to you guys. You know what I mean? So trying to check, just trying to make more videos. Andre, where what is up? What's up? What's up? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Torn Rain Reloaded. Good morning. Yes. She can't. I man, I predicted that. I did predict that. I got to you know, a little, little some fat on the back there. A little fat on the back because, man, it's a lot of things that was going on. But let me uh, let me get get everything all situated. See, I, I had to re I rewatched this three times because I seen it the first time. I seen it at work, um, and then um, uh, seeing it again at at home, um, again. So. I could just be refreshed, you know, on um uh, on the show. So uh give me just a second and let me get this all set up so we can go ahead and we can just go into this, we can discuss it, break it down live. I like doing these breakdowns with you guys live. I think this is I think this is better in my opinion, you know, but how many believe that the Phoenix Force is going to come back sometime in this uh in this series, especially the situation between Scott, you know, Madeline Pryor and uh, Jean Grey? You know what I mean. So I I do believe they keep. If you notice, the intro keeps teasing, you know, certain things within the series, and I know it's a lot of it is from, you know, la uh, you know the um the you know the original series. You know, uh, but, you know, it's always been a clue or a hint in a lot of the intros that we have not seen. Uh, I don't think Madeline is dead. I don't think, I don't think she's dead. Um, I kind of got a feeling this is just wild speculation, but the, the, and we're going to get to it when we get to the actual scene. But the vision that uh, Professor X seen when he was on the astral uh, astral plane, I believe that came from her. I don't believe that came from Jean Grey. I believe that came from Madame Pryor since she was uh, the last. Well, we could say Jean Grey, but you know she was a, she was very close to him because she took over for for Jean. You know what I mean? So. I believe that's who sent that message. That's just me. You know what I mean? But, you know, uh, he said, I don't want to see the Phoenix Force back. It takes up too much of it. Not necessarily like um, the whole Phoenix saga, but her unlocking that Phoenix power. I think that's what's going to happen. But but it's going to be, to me, I think it's going to be a cliffhanger for the last episode because they keep teasing this way too much. I think on uh, I think it's what is it ten episodes? I believe on the last episode is when we're going to see the Phoenix Force. It's going to lead into the second season, you know, of uh, X Men ninety seven. You know, uh, but I get what you're saying though. Uh, I was thinking about the Juggernaut. It's, you know what I was thinking about, Derek, from My Way Entertainment. If you know who My Way Entertainment is, then you know. Oh, it's the Juggernaut, bitch! <laughs> yeah. When Glad when Gladiator came down, they fought, when you first see Gladiator, uh, when they fought um, Black Tom Cassidy and and all of them, and uh, and Gl Gladiator came down, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He was Juggernaut was punching Gladiator, and Gladiator, <laughs> Gladiator threw him, at least threw him like tissue, and he was like, "But I'm the Juggernaut, yeah." Loved them dudes back in the day. Lot of dudes. Uh, but yeah, that's what I that's what I believe. That's what I believe. Uh, I think that her powers have been back for a minute, but now full force. She didn't believe in herself. Yeah, in 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 you know, uh a lot of Spider-Man. Uh what Spider-Man is that? Spider-Man 2. You know what I mean? Um that's what it reminds me of. When I seen it initially, I like this is part of Spider-Man 2. It's not that he didn't have his powers, it was going, it was his self-confidence within himself. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't really chewing him. It really wasn't truly seeing himself, you know. Uh, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, I can see Gene taking on the Phoenix and leaving. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but yeah, so let's get to it. 
Uh, of course, it's Gladiator and the Imperial Guards in this clip, basically just telling you that they're going to be in this scene, which this is from, um, I think season three, I believe season season three of uh of X Men ninety two. If it's not, I think it's season three. You know what I mean of uh of X Men ninety seven, and then even showing you know Professor X and Alandria. You know, now we found out that oh, oh, Charles here is oh, is oh, freak. You know what I mean? Um, but you know what it reminds me of this episode. I know it's called Life Death, but you know, it reminds me of the song by uh Bobby Caldwell, which you won't do, do for love. You try anything and you won't give up. You know what I mean? It's like. It, it, see, now I really understand life death in this episode a lot more strongly than in the episode four series. And I, in, this is what I mean. In here, you know, you're choosing a life that you could be able to live out. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You're going away. And then I think about it. Storm lost her power. She got with, uh, yeah, well, all right, yeah, rest in peace, Bobby Caldwell. You know what I mean? But uh, she had an opportunity to live her life as a normal person, which she hit it to in episode, what was that, two? Well, you know, I always wondered what that would look like if I just became, you know, a regular human. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what happened to her. And, at, you know, at that point, she was really ready to live her life as a human. And uh, <laughs> what's up, Derpy? What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, and you know, leave the life behind. But when you leave something behind that's unfinished, this is, me, this, this is my philosophy. When you leave something unfinished, which you're an X-Men, you still got a family. You didn't finish out what you need to finish out with them. It could be, it, it, you know, you could die just in the inside. You know, not just necessarily the people die, which the metaphor, you know, of what happened in episode five, is everybody died, but you're not even at full capacity, you know, as X-Men. You're missing Omega Level Mutant Storm, which we see what she did with the Sentinel in episode one. That's why everybody was like, damn, why y'all go just sideline Storm like this? And I love the way that they gave her a comeback. You know, you got Nightcrawler back. He was in the opening credits, so Nightcrawler uh, is back. But your X-Men are not the X-Men. And your X-Men are not the X-Men. What is leader? And I'm not talking about just Cyclops. Charles Xavier, you know what I mean? So you're not at full strength. So, you know, even though, you know, there's a parallel, each one of them was going getting ready to live their particular life, you know, but there's still death, you know, that was coming around the corner, either death physically or death eternally within yourself. So that's why I really on a on a on a uh philosophical level that's why i like this episode a lot just it's a lot in here that has to do with colonialism racism you know um just you know colonization it's a lot to impact for a a show that is animated they're hitting a lot of adult themes in here and i'm and, and i'm man I, I love Batman the Animated Series. I love Batman the Animated Series, but dude, oh my God. You know, oh my God. You know, whew. This is in some adult themes that I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about. Like as a kid, I wouldn't have been able to get these th type of themes, but now that they brought it out like this, so many different adult themes, you know, uh, to be able to unpack you know what i mean now i love this opening scene now this opening scene to me reminds me of something that they could be able to do in the mcu not only not only that um you have the players there only thing you're missing is the shiar empire you know so you know when they redo you know x-men i need it i swear i need it to look like this they need to be out in space not just, you know, uh, on Earth. They got to be out in space. They got to really embrace, you know, all of what the X-Men uh, encompasses like they're doing on this show. This was so amazing. I love this. And Deathbird, if you know, okay, 
if you play the X-Men uh game on Sega, you hate Death Bird because they uh, Death uh Death Bird comes down and tries to beat your monkey ass in that game. And I beat man, oh my god, when Gladiator punched her. I rolled when I seen that part. I can't wait. I hopefully I get to that part. Uh what's up, Wonder Woman? Uh Andre, um, they updated things and are pulling things from the comments to changing some things, and it's amazing. You see how easy storytelling can be when you when you kind of stick to the comics. You know, even if you're, you, I mean, you didn't got to be one for one, but damn, they're ninety percent at least. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean maybe, well, okay, let me not give them ninety. I give them seventy-eight point five. How about that? Is seventy-eight point five? Is that good? Yeah, I give them seventy-eight point five. You know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, that's how easy it could be. So Depper comes in. They're getting. They're fighting the Kree. Now, I would have loved to see this in the MCU. I would have loved to see. Because, again, that part ain't no joke. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, my God. Oh, Jerry. I, I, I will give you that. I will give you that. The, inter, uh, the Intergalactic uh, Empire, uh, you know, uh, Wakanda co- uh, would conquer the Shi'ar. I believe they would. I honestly believe uh, I believe they would. But when that part came down... I mean, she was over here smacking, beating people up. Uh, that's a high C. <laughs> no, nah, I think it's a little more than that. No, nah, okay. All right. 92. 92% comic, you know, and then they had to switch to everything up. But, of course, this is a Cree. You got Rona the Accuser in his comic accurate outfit. You know what I mean? Which was dope. You know, uh... But you have the Imperial Guard. And I had this pulled up because I don't remember all. Man, I'm going to be honest with you. I envy dudes who could pull just, you know, a lot of these characters just out of a hat. Like, I know some characters, but I don't know all of them. But the original, um, now the the original guard was Gladiator, Oracle, Starbolt, Neutron, Smasher, Fire, uh, Flashfire, and Warstar. That was the, um, the original uh base of and that's from x-men 107 uh from uh Cl- chris claremont so they come in there's a big turkey there's a big turkey shoot uh i believe fire is it is it uh fire uh flash fire that is the uh another brother to scott uh to scott summers i mean he just his daddy was out here just you know just making babies but the way that the way that ronin got pumped in this episode, he's bending the knee. He's bending the knee. They got, I mean, when I tell you Warbird ain't no joke, Warbird is is no joke. I, it's damn near perfect. Is is damn near a perfect series. Because it not only has, now, this is what I like about this, and, and this is where I'm going to give Bo Nemeo his point, his credit and his props. He took a lot of infor, uh, uh, inspiration from Chris Claremont. If you don't know, Chris Claremont is the one who invoked the uh, idea of uh, uh, of Professor X and and Charles uh, uh, Charles Exa- I mean, I'm sorry, Professor X and Magneto being you know a, a, a hint of Martin Luther King, of Malcolm X, and other you know other leaders that was out there. You know, metaphor for racism, sexism, you know, classism. We don't talk enough about that. You know, uh, I tell that to a lot of people. I was like, a lot of our war is not just racism. It's not, as a matter of fact, racism took a, not saying it took a backseat, but it's a lot more classism that's in there now. Nowadays, a lot of classism. Cause you can get a lot of doors when you got when you got some money, but you ain't got no money, your ass going to jail. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, Vulcan, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did I miss some people? Uh, what's uh, what's going on? Uh, hey, Mika, 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 Mika. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We want to say happy Friday Eve. Enjoy the show. Make sure you hit that like button. Have a great day on purpose. That's what I'm talking about. Mika coming in with a word. Well, Mika coming in preaching. No, <laughs> yes, Chris Claremont. Chris Claremont is one of the reasons why um, I like the X Men. He's one of the reasons when I actually could afford 
to buy comics, he was he's one or he's very much a reason because it's a lot of heavier subject matters that he was pulling out. And I got to give Bodomeo his props. He's pulling out all the stops on this one. But if you don't know, Gladiator is basically Superman. But if you punk him and make him feel inadequate, he ain't no good. <laughs> and if you know, you know. You know, you know. You know what I mean? So, but Gladiator is super dope. But came in there, you know, punking Ronan, you know, and then it was like, oh, you know, uh, here go my, my, you know, my glorious sister. You know what I'm saying? She wants, she wants to talk. I can't play all of it. Stop it. You know, so she announces that she is um, getting married to Charles Xavier. They're, you know, I know the way he was talking, they'd have consummated that marriage, you know, but uh, I did listen to, uh, I did listen to Heavy Spoilers. This your man, Paul from Heavy Spoilers. And let me talk about X-Men 97. <laughs> but he was saying, I think he was saying that, um, that, oh no, it wasn't them. It was Screen Crush, where he said that the Shi'ar, uh, or hatch like, uh, like birds. And I never thought about that. Never thought about that. Now, this is where I say, now they're giving all the, you know, she's giving the speech on how she is going to marry Professor X. You know what I'm saying? Everybody need to gather around, but who's doing the manual labor? The, the the horse looking people is the ones who's out here uh doing the manual labor and i didn't catch this the first time but these you know why the elites the elites the elites don't just look let me ask you those who know history who do they look like what what uh what uh century do they look like I want to see. I want to see if some people catch this. Just the way these are the elites, right? But who do they look like? Who do they remind you of? Put it in the comment section below, especially if you watch this on the replay. To me, they remind me of the colonialness way back in you know the um, the the seventeenth century, you know, uh, or let's just put it like the sixteen hundreds. You know what I mean? 16, 1700s. You know, uh, and there's a book that I've read um, that I have called The um, the Black Image in the White Mind by George Ferguson. Yeah, George Washington's folks. And the way that the white supremacy ideology, the ideology was about always about suppression and bringing up supremacy, you know, while downing folks. And damn it, does he do an excellent job and showing this with the Shi'ar. Because the Shi'ar think that they're um, they're above everybody. And they go around colonizing people. That's why you see all these different people, you know, uh, that's, a, that's around. And I think that, that, was, that was just as big in this story. Besides, you know, walking away from love to be able to save, to save somebody else. Man, heavy stuff. You know, real heavy stuff. So they announced that they're gonna she's gonna marry a Terran, you know what I mean? And they look cute, they be you know, they mismatch it. But again, these are the horse people who's still in the weeds while everybody going on a nice little stroll, huh? They, they suppressing these folks, you know what I'm saying? And and they gotta that look why that look like the heart shaped herb. But you know, she she you know, they start to talk about you know, um, the, you know, about ruling and, and how much they would be, a, uh, to be effective. And he's like, I won't, won't we just do this from earth? We can do this from earth. We can, we can do this from earth. She was like, no, I need you here with me so we can show all the people in the high council, you know, uh, what we're doing. But even professor, professor Xavier knows like, yo, these people are out here tilling in the weeds while we over here taking a light leisurely stroll while they over here in their garden. What's up with this? You know what I mean? And I and I like I said, I, I love this. And they over there whispering. Look at him. I know Professor X has been over here smacking cheeks, but I don't know. He's a Terran. I don't know about that. 
And they go really racist on here. Really racist. Uh, they refer to the guy who wrote the book about the white man's burden. Yes. Yes. I employ any black person who loves history, who wants actual historical documentation to, uh, yes, uh, to go, uh, uh, go find this book by George Fredrickson, The Black Image in a White Mind. I'm telling you, it would change. Darwin, you would never look at look at evolution or Darwinism the same again after reading that. If you're if you're into you know if you're into evo, you know evolution, Darwinism, and all of that. Oh my God, there's so oh my. Let me I get let me that's not that's not what we're here for. Anyway, it's a great book, great book to have. But you know he you know he's expressing to her in this scene. Hey, I I left my X Men. And you know, uh, and I do have that burden. I'm I'm willing to be with you, but you know, I still got to be getting close to my people. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of great philosophy when he was talking about we play make believe. Sometimes, have you ever fell in love with somebody that you know that you didn't believe, you knew good and well you didn't love them, and you just for the sake of not being lonely, you know that you just start playing make believe with them. You know, it, even though your mind is somewhere completely else, you're trying to make this person so happy that you just create the fantasy. You know, and even when you go away with people and you leave your responsibilities, you're creating a fantasy. That's not something, that's not even your reality because you know what you're leaving. Love the story. Oh, my God. Great, 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 great. Bo DeMaio, use a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I was only talking about Bo. <laughs> I mean, killing this killing this so now we go uh over with uh with forge and um and storm and the adversary now what i did like about this one which i called when i was on there with blue that i believe the adversary was something it, it, it's a construct but it was also something in her mind because i all i i i, I preach this all the time the biggest adversary sometimes is the man in the mirror when you look in the mirror sometimes your biggest enemy is you and i love the way that they use the adversary but use the uh uh um uh the 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 uh the the voice actress to to do the adversary so you can see the duality that she has to deal with you know in the guilt tripping and all of that i love this but sometimes you have to go to your darkest places uh and sometimes you have to go to a place where you're most vulnerable at to be able to come out fully powered. And her biggest fear is claustrophobia. But it's like conquering fear itself. Like my biggest fear, not even going to hold you, is drowning. E Man, you can't get me to go white rider rafting with nobody. <laughs> Does that sound like uh, Cat Williams? You can't get me to go with nobody. My body's not built for white rider rafting. I can't do it. I don't do the swimming. No, nigga, I won't do it. <laughs> but, but, the way that I conquer my fear of water, especially, I'm not going to lie, I legitimately freak out. I legitimately freak out. So I went into, um, when I went to St. Pete's, I just went into the ocean. Now, I didn't swim, but I got enough where I, you know, felt comfortable. You know what I mean? And I wasn't freaking out. I was fighting my fears. And I loved it. Man, man, I love this episode. This is great, great storytelling in this episode. You know, and, you know, she was teasing her about everything that she said. And again, how many times is us? This is a great story to tell just as on a human level. How many times have we psyched ourselves up and thought that we were no good and that every decision that we made was so bad that we wouldn't be able to find love? We wouldn't be able to find happiness. You need to just, you need to just sit and wallow in your misery. You know what I mean? Great. Oh, my God. Great storytelling. And then she was shape-shifting into other people, you know, in this. And I love this. And she was like, you know, again, fighting your own fears. What is your biggest fear? And are you willing to fight that? Now, I did like that Forge did use a lot of the magic. And I'm going to go back a little bit uh, because I want to show, you know, the magic that they use. They're, uh, they're 
connecting a lot of things that Doctor Strange, as far as magic, where magic comes from, all of that. They're connecting a lot of a lot of things from Doctor Strange, and they're putting it in here. So that's why when you see him initially do the magic, you see the rings and everything looks exactly, exactly like what we've seen from Doctor Strange and, and other magic wielders, you know, in the MCU. This is great right here with the spinning, um, the, like the spinning magic and stuff like that. So people who are watching X-Men 97, but have watched the X-Men, I mean, uh, have watched the Marvel movies, can be able to connect the, uh, the 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 tissue. I love this, love this, and again, this is a great start. You know, this is a great start if you're trying to mer if you if you trying to get me back for me not complaining. You know, uh, uh, about um the way that they're handling the MCU because I'm a Marvel fan. I've been a Marvel fan for years. This ain't. Since me and my uncle, my uncle used to sit down and we used to watch the Incredible Hulk show together. That's where I got, I'm talking about with Bill Bixby. He was a big Bill Bixby fan. I don't know why. He just loved Bill Bixby. And we used to sit down and we used to watch the Incredible Hulk. You know what I mean? The uh, Spider-Man TV show was on Syndicate. You know, Spider-Man and his amazing friends was on Syndicate. You know, so, I, I you know, I've been a fan. So when I see the product that I really, really, really like start going downhill. Yeah, I got some pride. I'm going to defend it. I'm going to defend it. I don't give a damn what nobody say. But the other other hand, you know, they need to get their stuff together. And Torn, me too. Boy, you know how, boy, I, you know how many dimensions people be sent in if I had the mystical powers? <laughs> but he ended up breaking the spell, and now she has to go into this cave so she could be able to um to receive this cacti that his mother said they could be able to heal the wounds from the adversary. And I love that the book, you know, uh reminds me of like a um a it's a book with a feather. It's almost like an ancient shaman book, you know. Uh I don't want to be disrespectful with any any uh Native Americans or you know or uh you know indigenous indigenous uh natives to this land so uh but yeah she has to go and get it and again in her brain you know who was coming the adversary now we pop right back up to to, to Le uh, leandra uh Lelandra. and basically you know depper i and i again i do like this but again like i said i know that they're built off birds that's their whole gimmick you know i mean not gimmick they hatch weird i'm one you know it's weird you know <laughs> but my thing is the the elise reminds me so much of colonialness it's ridiculous and it's really brought forth here i mean you know they're so used to you know status quo they don't even want to change now again who wants to give up power who wants to give up power? That's the question. Deb Bird comes out of here. Why she called the Milky Way ghetto, y'all? Like, why the Milky Way got to be gay? He come, come from this ghetto Milky Way. What? I was rolling. I was like, you okay, now I know black dude wrote this. He done called the Milky Way ghetto. Wow. You know what I mean? But she was saying, oh, okay, if he's real, then he needs to delete everything. He needs to, he needs to erase everything out of his mind that has to do with the x-men or any of that leave your world behind this is what he was like xavier will see his uh milky uh milky way ghetto become our throne she sound i am just like if that bird is that bird black <laughs> is that bird black let me full screen this for the ones who ain't who you know uh let me let me just kind of hide the uh just for a second, Xavier will see his Milky Way ghetto become a new throne world. I died when I seen this. I legitimately died when I seen it. A Milky a ghetto Milky Way? Our Milky Way that bad? <laughs> Damn. 
damn, it was like, I know you're speaking the, uh, the words out loud, but damn, you had to call it ghetto. Damn, that's a shot. You know, but, you know, he, he's, uh, I mean, he was willing to do it, though. He was willing for a portion of him. He was willing to, you know, for the love he had. But it was like, damn, I got to scrub. And where Dr. Strange at? You know, we got to do the, 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 uh, what is it? The, uh, the stuff of, what is that? The sum of cough, or cough call. I can't think of the first part of that. But yeah, the ruins of cough call. We got to do the ruins of cough. I don't want to do the ruins. You do the ruins of cough call. You, since you call it, uh, my Milky Way ghetto, you know. But um, uh, this is a great conversation with Charles and, uh, and uh and Gladiator and how much that they have been brainwashed with idea uh with idealism. You know what I mean? Instead of living with harmony, you see yourself as superior and you see everybody else as inferior. And he makes a uh a reference to Magneto because Magneto, you know, is on that kick. You know, mules are going to be superior than humans. You know, and again, a lot of great dialogue in this. You know, um, he's, you know, and he was like, hey, if you're not going to do this, you refuse to be together. I mean, he was really, you know, he was really, you know, to do this for the love of his life. But he was like, you know, I'm like, damn, do I really got to really got to do this? And he was going to show her he wants to be with her. Now we cut back. And again, there's great intercuts because you get to see the parallel of the two stories come together. And this is a great to have charles and storm in this in this episode fantastic fan because you can see both parallels you can understand both parallels i love this love this all right so she has to crawl into a team now it's real there ain't no um ain't no adversary let's go tell you you got to get your ass in there and get that cacti now crawl <laughs> You gonna get your white suit dirty, but crawl, you know. But she comes to the realization that maybe this was all a blessing to disguise. And I had to learn, you know, that I'm greater than my power. It's almost in the vein of where great, uh, great power comes great responsibility, where, you know, the act of why you do it is greater than the power that you will while you're doing it. And what I mean by that is that the pureness of your heart just to go out and do something because that's what you want to do. You want to go out there and save people. If you're, that's why I give a lot of first responders a lot of props, especially the ones who really care about their profession because if I got to do something to save somebody or whatever, I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? I'm going to do whatever I can because, you know, I might not get the, the recognition or none of that, but my job is to save people, so I'm going to do it. I love that that's a parallel in this, that Storm is a goddess. She's legitimately the strongest X-Men on the, one of the strongest X-Men on the team. You know what I mean? At the same time, just being human and being able to love and understand why you love and understand why you're doing what you're doing. That's the greatest power that you can ever have because you never take that for granted. All right, let me keep going. You know, uh, but there was there was an interesting dialogue here that I like for Forge and Storm. He said the greatest lie that was ever told by the Europeans was the white lie. And for my for my indigenous people, if you ever heard of a five dollar Indian, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the lie to tell us that you know we were three fifths as far as far as black folks, the white lie to tell us we were three fifths human. You know what I mean? And using Darwinism or whatever to uh, spread, you know, negative ideology against black people. You know, there's again, like I said, George Frederick's of uh, the black image in a white mind is a great book to have because it, you hear strictly from colonialists and abolitionists that's counter who are black people, where do they come? I mean, it literally answers you the question where they come from, all of that. You know what I mean? But I didn't want to go there, but, you know. So now she got to face her uh, her biggest fears. And in this, Charles has to face his biggest fears. Because, again, he was so... Now, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to be honest with you. Lalandra must have some good, you know, some ooh, nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? 
some ooh wee because he was ready to renounce his throne like I came and coming to America. You know, from this day forward, I renounce my throne. You know what I mean? Just for that, he was about to re uh uh renounce being the leader of the X Men. I'll I'll wipe my uh my memory, all of that. You know, and of course, Death Bird and Ledger is is, is sis, you know, are sisters. But you know, he was he was getting ready to do all of that. Then she goes hard even more. She's the most racist per. She's the most racist person I've seen. You know, <laughs> in a TV show since Archie Bunker. She was like, have mixed race and, and inferior fluid freaks. If, if you're your freak fluids, what? They are beneath me. He ain't even a real Terran. He got freak fluid. I ain't gonna lie, though. I ain't gonna lie. I got a little freak fluid myself. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and she was letting the Imperials know, he, you know, y'all might go mad. And then, oh my God, I gotta show this. I got to show this. I might get in trouble, but Gladiator, man, man, when Gladiator turns around, hold on, I got to pause it because you already know, I ain't trying to get in trouble. You know, I'm counting down the seconds, but when you ran in, boom, oh, snap, oh my God, let me, I got to play it one more time. Like, oh, you going to come, you going to come and snatch up my queen? You know, he was like, Gladiator came through. Shh, you ain't scared of BOW! Oh, God! <laughs> oh, my God. I let every minute it is. Okay. All right. All right. One more time. <laughs> One more time. I am childish. I am childish. Because I take the, the smallest joy. Because all that trash she was talking, she was talking crazy. She was talking crazy. And my man, Gladiator came through was like oh so you want to pull off the claws huh yeah oh i got you you know what i'm saying oh you can't harm me i'm gladiator bow <laughs> oh i love the animation in this love the animation in this clock the shit out of man she needed that too and didn't man i'm talking about did it didn't didn't blink did nothing she caught all this to the face Oh man, and then uh George Wash uh uh George uh George Washington little cousin over here with this man just look how they was looking at these people. But I love Charles Xavier gave the biggest lesson of all. What is real power? You know what I mean? Is real power you going around and and um and and colonizing all these planets? <laughs> I see that, Erica. <laughs> it's all belief in himself. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. If you know, if he starts feeling bad about himself, that dude ain't no good. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is talk crazy to him like they did that slime in uh, Ghostbusters 2. And he ain't no good. So, yeah. So, she had to crawl into the space to get the cacti. You know what I'm saying? Then the adversary came. Now, mind you, it's dark. She done dropped her... Uh, she didn't dropped her uh uh her flashlight adversary start getting in her head now have you have you noticed gladiator belief in yourself professor x started to believe in himself and the greatest thing that i am as a teacher i can teach you you know what i'm saying that i can teach you you know what i mean and you know when she said this is not a daydream now i'm not gonna lie when she did this Oh my God! You talk about excited, excited, oh, man. First of all, I already knew this was gonna happen. I knew it. I I was like, "There's no way they're gonna sideline." You know, one of the greatest X Men of all time, the first black female superhero in a group. <laughs> Don't stop believing. <laughs> When she did this, and we knew, I knew all she had to do was 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 think about what you know. You're greater than your power. Believe in who you are. Never get down on yourself. This is why I love this series. This is the stuff back in the day. In the in you know the ones who grew up with this original show, who was either uh, preteens or teenagers that grew up with this show. In shows like this, this is what taught us. You know. 
to believe in ourselves and believe who we were. That's what we love these shows. You know, even as adults, even, you know, I'm fucking in my 40s. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a spring chicken anymore. You know what I mean? But these shows are still teaching stuff like that. You know what I mean? And when she, oh my God, when she transformed, when she transformed, and I, man, tell me that ain't, let me just, let me full screen that real quick before I start trying, you know, let me, man, oh my God, oh my God, I should have used that as my thumbnail. You know what I'm saying? What did he say on Wakanda Forever? Show them who you are. And she did. I mean, this was so dope. This is so dope because all she had to do was believe in who she really, who she really is. That's it. I mean, um, oh, she had giant size X Men number one. This suit, the original suit, wigged out. I wigged out. I was, uh, I was at work. I was at work, and we had we had a slow period. And this all happened to play during the slow period. Man, look at the look at that storm. You know what I mean? That storm was was, was humongous. This is why I said greatest superpower of all time. Can you name five electric powers based on fictional characters? Can you name five electric power based fictional characters? Uh Storm Thor, um, Static shock, black lightning. I'm missing one. Electro. That's who I got. Man, this is dope. Tell me this ain't dope, though. Tell me this ain't dope. Oh my God. This was so dope. And again. Shout out to my shout out to my sister. Look at look at this. Shout out to my sisters, though. Shout out to my sisters. I need storm like this in the MCU. That's what I need. I need my storm to look like this in the MCU. Because that's a black goddess. That's a black goddess. That is a black goddess. I love this. Is so amazing. Classic X Men, you know what I'm saying? Giant size X Men number one, you know, a throwback. It's in, in a head nod to Chris Claremont in his writing, you know what I'm saying? And all it, man, this is just, I mean, look at that. Look at that. Man, this is makes me, I'm not gonna lie. Seeing this is why I love black women. I love y'all. I love y'all because this is a, you know what I mean? This is just just the beauty and the elegance and the grace, man. Loving every minute of it. Never uh, loved every minute of it. You know what I'm saying? Every little black girl who's seen this, you know what I'm saying? Can be like that storm. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? And then now you can have more storms. This is why it's so important to continue our original black characters. This is why that is so important because there's going to be. You know, it, it Jerry's exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, what what if story? But uh, what if uh, what if storyline? I don't really care about what if right now. I'm um, be honest. Uh, but again, this is why it's so important to continue to elevate our original black characters because when you elevate our original black characters. You can see where exactly, you know, kids and stuff like that dressing up, you know, uh, in those, uh, as those characters, you know what I mean? Um, you know, little black girls and little black boys can see other, you know, black, you know, uh, uh, black male characters and black, uh, female characters on screen so they can be able to have something that they can be like, wow, you know, even though we know you could never have powers of storm, but it'd be good to imagine and dream. And then when you become older, you imagine the dream at Comic Con. You know what I mean? So, uh, what's up, Ricky Domo? Derek, uh, Derek Dynasty. I seen Jay Cargill up front personal when she came. Uh, uh, when I went to an AEW. If you, if people who follow me on uh, on Instagram, that picture, that's my that's my regular picture because I can't change it. 
uh, is from AEW, and I got to see her up uh, up close and personal. No joke, I wouldn't fight her. But again, I love this scene too, is because this showed that you know the the the, the detriment of imperialism, the detriment of colonialism, and why it was so easy for us to be manipulated into thinking that white was right. You know what I mean? You know, people that wanted to bleach their skin and all of that. You know what I mean? Just, just, just a whole entire thing. Man, best right I've seen in a long time because it's deeper than that. And then he put, hey, when they said, uh, you know, take them to school, this is exactly what they mean. Take them to school. He took them to school. You know what I mean? I love this. Okay, we you're talking about the okay. If we're talking about the watcher, then we got to see how that plays out because the watcher was a uh, 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 watcher was also in the '92 series, also. So we got to see if that's the you know watch you from are you know from the what if series that's, that's we haven't even seen them in the live MCU yet. So yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've kind of they, they uh, again. This is something that. That you know, Kevin Feige and them got to get their stuff together, you know. But th again, this was this was why Claremont's writings were so good because it it, it teaches uh, you this stuff. You know what I'm saying? That you can understand, you know, in this format. And then when he seen the death of his students, you see, I love the way that they use almost like a CGI, you know, mixed in with the artwork. You know, amazing. Amazing, and then he saw the death of you know not only his X Men, but you know the chip when he called him the Children of Adam. Love that reference. Love that reference because Normie Mutants is called the Children of the Adam. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or mutants. But I love that reference. And he was like, I gotta go now. I don't care. Let me out. Let me out, though. Let me out. You sure? Let me out, though. <laughs> and if you know what that reference is, he had a let me out, though, boy, uh, reference. I got to go because I got, you know, they need me. My children need me. My students need me. You know what I'm saying? And then we get Boulevard Tracks running down, got popped by this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, red uh, 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 energy wa uh, wave. And he goes in there. And I can't read out the actual diner because I don't think it shows you what the actual diner is. But we find out, you know, uh, it was sinister. It was sinister this whole time, which, again, you know, they need to make him entry-level big bad. Not the overall big bad of, of X-Men, you know, when they come out, but the overall, you know, uh, one, of, one of the villains. You got to lead up to Apocalypse because Apocalypse is just, he did, that's who he is, it's Apocalypse. You know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, I absolutely love this episode because of the teaching, the the just the way that they structured this episode. You know, taking love and what would you would do for love, and and would you leave your love to be able to save, you know, uh, your people, your family. This reminds me of the book. This has a lot of elements. I don't know if you guys have ever read a book called The Alchemist. It has a lot of elements of the Alchemist in here. You know what I mean? But uh. But yeah, oh my god, your know, whole look is magic. Man, I mean, so dope, so so dope. Oh, okay, question though Do you think this animated series is going to cross over with something else? I do believe, I do believe that this will cross over with dead. I think there's elements in there that might hint into Deadpool. I would I like that? Yeah, will it happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know, uh, and choosing your uh, individual happiness over, you know, the greater good of what you're called to do. And some of us is called for a greater purpose in life, but we're so selfish because the only thing we can think about is what we want and not, and not what's the greater good of what you could be doing. Uh, but yeah, just awesome. So what did you guys think about this episode? I mean, good God almighty. Just saying, this X Men Universe is going to be rebooted, and we're looking at 2027, I believe. So, yeah. But, yeah, I absolutely love this. This is amazing. What did you guys think about this? You know, I love doing these 
the light like a live stream i love doing this with you guys the breakdowns because it's so much fun to see what you guys have to say about this too and of course you already know you know it's time to go yo the sign is real simple b it says wrap it up wrap that shit up b Thank you again so very much for uh, tuning into another episode of the Dre Mac Show. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so you can never, ever, ever miss one of my videos again. Until next time, I'll let you guys later. Peace and vibe higher, man. Let me get up out of here. Let me y'all enjoy y'all Thursday. Where my outro at? Man, I'm late taking these kids to school. It's raining. Wait a minute. You're telling me the video's over? What? Okay, I guess so. If you have came to this portion of the video, thank you so very much for sticking to the end. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that little bell notification so you never miss one of my videos. And if you really want to, you don't got to, go ahead and follow the social media links that's down below. Until next time, I'll let you guys later. Peace and Bob Hire, y'all. Y'all take care of y'all, so.